music creators, Mike here. Are you looking for an epic woodwinds sample library? Is that even possible? Well, why not? In this video, we're going to check out Heaviosity's Vento Modern Woodwinds. So let's dive in right now. Alright, so let's check out what you get with Vento Modern Woodwinds. So this is not a traditional woodwinds library. In fact, even if you go into the library here, open the traditional folder, it's more focused on tone and application of woodwind uh, ambience to your music. So it doesn't have the complete range of woodwind instruments in the woodwind family, but rather it has these contrabass ensemble, low ensemble, clarinets, flutes, and high ensemble. So clarinets and flutes are the only individual instruments here. It's more focused on ensembles here. And then if you go to Evolve, you have a woodwind designer, which is my personal favorite, and a loop designer. Let me now close these and go through uh, each of these um, presets one by one. So the contrabass ensemble and the low ensembles are my personal favorites because they have such an epic low rumble uh, tone. And uh, let's check the contrabass ensemble starts all the way down on A0, as you can see here, and goes up to, let's see, C3. So this is the range. Now, if I play something here, let's do a little riff here. I really love that tone. So that is the long sustain. Here we can try, let's say, a portato on this as well. Which is kind of a marcato similar tone there. Then the low ensemble, which starts from I think, yeah, G, G1. So I would probably double this in octaves with the contrabass ensemble. But you can play this like. And you see a lot of dynamic range here really opens up here at the fortissimo dynamics. And uh, this is also good for staccato, which has round robins here. And you can play things like... And pr um, uh, uh, program key switches to, for example, ha add an accent. Of course, you need to program that uh, or use an articulation switcher in your DW. And uh, then we get to the clarinets, which are starting where, let's see, here on E3. So a really great tone, kind of traditional tone. However, what you don't get is legato or vibrato, so uh, remember that. that Vento is more about the, the ambience, the tone, and the sound design used, the, the more modern use, basically, of woodwinds in your music. So not really any classical music in that sense, but more modern, hybrid, epic music, and so on. So with the flute, let's try... I love the flute, especially for rhythmic passages, like if we... The, where do they start? All the way down on C3, but I will play it up here. So you can play something like... Or something rhythmic. Very warm tone, I would say. Let's try the sustain here. I would like to try further on when I use this in action to layer it with a traditional woodwinds library so I can have the, this uh, this tone, this warm tone, this but with separation between the notes with a legato slash vibrato um, patch on another library.
but very agile even with a long sustain. As you can hear, let's try this Forsato. which gives you more of an attack in the beginning of the note. And then we get to the high ensemble, which starts at, let's see, F3 and goes all the way up to C6. So let's pitch it up an octave so you can play. So here I could probably play something like a scale run. In this case, I uh, would probably, perhaps, uh, let's see, where was I? Use a staccato or something like. Okay, so this is really tricky to play <laughs> live, of course, but you can write it in into your sequencer to create some kind of run. Or uh, what I like to do is play this. Um, Rhythmic, like like an ostinato on strings, but usually in octaves, I feel is better for woodwinds. So two notes at the time, or or chord. Think of that as a phrase, a rhythmic phrase. Uh, let's try the portato. And if you think you have too much room tone, you can always dial back the hole here, even mute it. So you only have the close and room mic. So those are the traditional sections here. Again, contrabass ensemble, um, low ensemble. I mean, I would probably use this. Let's, uh, in fact, go in here and transpose this up an octave. So I can play them like this. Let's try a sustain here. Imagine this with a low brass layer on top of that. And you see how amazing uh, of an epic sound even woodwinds can add to your composer tool kit. Next, uh, I'm gonna go to the Vento Sound Designer. So here I loaded up uh, a couple of different presets, singing woods. And this is uh, later, so I think if you play it down here, you get everything. And this is the, uh, the layers, one, two, and three channels. So the blue here. As you can see, uh, different different uh, phrases here. So if I play something in octaves like this, or uh, let's do it here. Beautiful haunting sound there. This is hybrid wind and ambient patch. Let me play it down here and see. Okay, so really low end here. So let's do G here, G here, and G up here. And then try to play a melody on top. Use this as a drone. I mean, <laughs> that could be a beginning of a cinematic track right there. So the designer uh, part I really love. Hypnotic Horror. Let's try that. Yeah, really, really scary. And you have to, with trial and error, see what, how you can use this in action, of course. And finally, I have um, uh, loaded up the Loop Designer, just a preset here, where you can actually transpose. This is really key. If you play something here, this is a phrase. The blue part here is the mid motif here, the high motif. You can have a different one there and a low here. And then if I load up the interface, you can see, let's see, designer keys, yeah. Um, 
here you can actually switch the the key. So uh, if I play something, let's see if I can find it here. So it's with, if we play an A, and then I can transpose it to let's say G. Okay, like that. Uh, and that way you open up a lot more flexibility, even with a loop designer, which personally is my least favorite because I'm such a control freak that I want to know what kind of phrases I play in most cases. So, But if you like to use phrases like this, you can in fact transpose them with the key switches uh, right here. Now let me share my top favorite aspects of Vento. So first is the beautiful layout of the user interface. I mean, it doesn't only look good, it's very easy to dive right in and use. So you can see the shift, the articulations here. You can do, go into the different pages. You have this dynamic, the most important slider, your knob here in the middle. Shade the dynamic range and the velocity range, the curve, and all this kind of stuff. Very easy to dive right in. And that takes us to the next favorite aspect, which is lots of articulations. So while it doesn't have any legato or vibrato articulations, it does actually have more than you can see. So these are the articulation slots, but if I click here, I open up everything. So you have the core articulations, sustained, staccato, portatus, forzato, and uh, PPP sustain, and then extended types here, um, various rips, atonal effects, and so on. So if I just load up, let's say, a random vibrato, you get actually get vibrato, but not in the usual sense. Okay, you can do whole tone textures, and uh, let's see. In fact, let's uh, let's load up the high ensemble and see how that looks like. If we have still, yeah, we even here within ensemble, you get lots of different. So let's do subtle pulses. You can do rips. Uh, let's see where we have them here. Really great for spicing up like a run, basically. Ascending octave. That is basically a run. It's called rip up eight. Uh, so an octave here, and uh, let's see, they have various kinds of clusters. Good for scary tones, underscores, tension, and, and all that stuff. So lots of articulations, and you can map them easily. I mean, just shift them out. I would usually keep the four main articulations at least here, perhaps not PPP. It can be good for, you know, this very low... So PPP will remain very soft, even at the high setting compared to sustain. With PPP, you get this. Underscore type of woodwind ensemble. Next, number three, my favorite aspect is tone shaping options. So uh, as you can see here, you have, of course, the dynamics, mod wheel or CC1 here in the middle. You can shape the velocity range, so you only keep, even at the highest setting, it will not go further than this here. If you want to keep it, force it to be really quiet. You can do the same for, so that velocity, the dynamics. Oh yeah, so it's the difference between the velocity and dynamics here. Now you can also shape the dynamics curve. Uh, you can shape the microphone mix here even use a full mix. So this is actually a tip. If you purge this one here, you will unload it from memory. So if you don't want to use, for example, the whole mics, purge them and you see the RAM goes down. Or if you want to use just a full mix, purge everything else and you get the full mix like so. And save a lot of RAM. And in most cases, this can serve as your main go-to starting point, the full mix. And then if you want to change them out, open up uh, the rest. And you can also dive further into uh, the envelope section here, an ADSR envelope, an EQ, like here. 
and you can even use the EQ on the closed mic, room mic, cold mic, or on all mics. So you can have different EQs per mic. And then you also have a filter section. Again, you can filter the whole mic, room mic, closed mic differently or use it on the full. So I just realized this, that you can access all these tone shaping sound design options per articulation. So as you can see here, it's not activated on this articulation, but uh, it's active here. So when I shift it out, everything you saved per articulation is still there. So let's try a notch filter here on link. So I actually, you can use it on whole room close or the full microphone mix or link them all together. So now well, while this is active, I use a notch filter with a cutoff without it. Natural PPP sound, but with it. Like this, so. Really, really cool uh, sound design capability there as well. Now, my fourth favorite aspect is the snapshot. So if you remove this eye here and go to this, the snapshot view, you can see core extended so effects and rips. You can just load up, let's say, extended wet here, and you get a, a set of sounds and articulations. So let's say you want something uh, core with a very wet mix, just to do that ambient. sound just load that up if you want to of course you can uh, use your own uh, snapshots as well and now my fifth and final uh, favorite aspect is the sound design power so if you load up instead the evolved woodwind designer here you can actually go in and check all the various presets in the snapshots here organic presets uh, or ambient presets and so on, or you can simply initialize all macros off and then uh, create something of your own. So it's based on layers. You have browsing layer one here. Let's use a low ensemble staccato waves. Let's listen to that. Okay. Let's see if we can load something up here in layer two flutes. Um, let's do random staccato. Okay. So this one with this one. And let's do the final layer as a loop stereo big wide swell. Let's see. So we have now. Okay. And then we go back and check the options here. You can do some kind of layer manipulation. But the main thing here is you can add the cycle like so. Uh, or the envelope shaper here, or the arpeggiator that drives this. And then you can start to use all of these different settings here, go into the modules, set them to link, or only do one layer. But basically, if you turn on the cycle, let's see. Uh, you saw that to start to move. Super, super powerful and um, creative stuff going on in the Woodwind Designer. I mean, just use that as a, for drone and pads and ambient and atmospheric sound design. This is hard to beat. So. Uh, you can just go in and change anything. I would have loved a like a random um, button to load various types of um, layers here. But I don't think there is one. I haven't found one. Anyway, uh, you still have the... It's so easy to just go in and change this out as you like. And then you can... Now go into the cycle here, macro here, and start to control how this evolves, you know, faster, like that, smooth it out, or create your own curve, of course. And 
and then go in and change whatever you want whatever you want to happen like so turn them on hmm. and filter perhaps let's do that on channel 3 Everything that uh, goes on here in the macro section, you know, will, will affect the sound. And again, you can just start with one of these presets and then change some settings. Until you're happy with the final sound, of course. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. Woodwinds that will be epic, atmospheric, sound design, hybrid. It works for everything except probably classical, traditional, orchestral music. But I will definitely find a spot for this in my composer toolkit for all of those genres that need some creative mindset for the woodwinds in it. Now choose which video you are going to watch next, or you can check out the amazing bonuses in the video description.